Okay, so as we have discussed in the previous video that it was the belief up till 19th century that atom is the fundamental particle of element. Towards the end of the century, in 1897, Jerry Thompson, he did an experiment and he showed that atom is not the fundamental indivisible particle of an element. There exist more into the atom and that constitute the atom and they are the fundamental particles. So I'm going to show you the experimental setup which J.J. Thompson had and the on which he did the experiment to get his result. His experimental setup was quite simple one. He had a glass chamber like this. Now in this glass chamber, he introduced two electrodes. Electrodes are piece of conducting metals, any metals you can take for convenience, copper or any other metal. Now he connected these electrodes with a power bank. A power source, maybe a series of batteries or series of, series of capacitors, they have to be, it has to be a large power source. It cannot be 5 volt or 10 volt, it has to be in kilovolt. Let this be the negative terminal of the power source and this is the positive terminal. The electrode which is attached to the negative terminal is called cathode. So this is cathode. And the electrode which is attached to the positive terminal is called anode. Remember that cathode is a terminal where cations is attracted. Cation, you must be knowing, has positive charge. Anion has negative charge. So the positive charge will run rush towards the negative plate. So cation will rush towards the negative plate. So negative plate will be cathode. Anion will rush towards the positive plate. So the positive plate will be anode. You can remember it like this. Okay, so this is the basic setup. You have a glass chamber, you have two electrodes and you have a battery connected to the two electrodes. So this become cathode and this become anode. Now you also have a pump attached to this chamber and the purpose of the pump is to pump out any gas which is present in this chamber. I'll tell you why it has to be pumped out. So you have a chamber and it is approx it's, it's a near, near vacuum. So the, the gaseous molecules present inside the chamber is as minimum as it can be for practical purpose. So this pump has pumped out all the gases. So this is near wall vacuum. You cannot make it perfect vacuum, but this is near vacuum. That must, the pressure inside will drop down to 0 0.02 millimeter. To such a small value of pressure, we have created inside the chamber. Okay, now what next? What, it, what will be observed is, what, what happens is in such a condition when you have put huge source of power, a battery at DC voltage across this electrode. So this has huge negative charge and this has huge positive charge. So this is the negative terminal and this is the positive terminal. So what happens under such circumstances is whatever gas molecules, few gas molecules which is present inside gets ionized. I'm telling you this beforehand, but the person who did the experiment didn't know what is happening. So what he observed was that if you coat one side with such substances, such a layer, that if it is bombarded by a radiation, it, it starts glowing. So any fluorescent substance we coat one of the side with this. So what, what was observed is this side starts glowing. So you coat a fluorescent material and starts glowing. Now, since it starts glowing, it's an indication that some radiation are falling into it, falling on it. Also, you have a small hole in the anode. The hole serves the purpose that whatever radiation is coming, that this anode allows the radiation to pass through it and fall on the fluorescent substance. So that fluorescent substance starts glowing, it starts radiating. Now, it's, it was a known fact 
that when a radiation is being fallen on a fluorescent substance, on a fluorescent coating, on a layer, then it starts glows. Now they observe that the fluorescent layer is glowing. Now that is a confirmation that some radiation is being fallen on this. So that radiation is coming from this direction. That's why it is falling on the fluorescent substance. Had the radiation been going from this direction, from anode to cathode, then the fluorescence would have been observed on this surface towards the cathode. Now, since the fluorescent substance is glowing towards the anode, so it's a clear indication that the ray is coming from cathode to anode. So since the direction, since the originating plate is cathode, so the ray was termed as cathode ray. That was the first observation done in this experiment. So what do we know up till now? We know up till now is that if we present a setup of huge potential difference between two plates, then there is a radiation emanating from the direction of cathode towards anode and that ray is called cathode ray since it is originating, it seems to be originating from cathodic plate. So it is a cathode ray. So all we know up till now is there's a radiation being formed due to the high voltage that we have set up in the system. But that is not sufficient. We have to know more whether this radiation has a charge because if you fall light on a fluorescent coating, even then it glows. We don't know whether the radiation has charge. If it has charge, what kind of charge it has, positive charge or negative charge, or is it neutral? Now in order to find out the charge, there's, a, there's an instrument called Electrometer. Electrometer, as you might be aware, it's an instrument to measure charge. Suppose the setting of electrometer is a very simple one. You have, you have, you know, two leaves of a metal, very thin, very light like this. Suppose you have a charge. Okay. Now you have a glass ball like this. You don't know whether there is charge on this or not because you can't see charges. But assuming that there's a charge, suppose there's a positive charge. So basic principle is you bring this glass ball and touch on this electrometer. When you touch, then the charge will get dispersed because it is also a conductor. So when it gets dispersed, then charge also comes on the two leaves of electrometer. Now, as you know, that like charges repel. Okay. So this, these two leaves will repel and it will change its position. So when you touch it and they repel each other, that means it was carrying charge. Even if it was carrying negative charge, then also the negative charge would disperse on the leaf and again both the leaves will have negative charges and again they will repel. So irrespective of the charge whether it is positive or negative there will be repulsion between the leaves. This shows that there is a charge on this ball. We don't know whether positive or negative but it will detect charge not the nature of the charge but the presence of the charge. So this is the basic functioning of electrometer. So radiation is coming from the cathodic side to anodic side. Whether that radiation has charge or not, that could be easily measured by an electrometer. I have explained to you the functioning, the basic working principle of electrometer. Now it was observed that electrometer do respond to the radiation. That means that radiation carries charge. So what do we know, know now up till now? So we know that when we do such a setup, when we create high voltage between two plates, then there starts the there starts a radiation that radiation carries charge these two information we have this is not sufficient now what we have to know is whether that charge is separable from radiation or it is inseparable from radiation okay so for that what jj thompson did i tell you radiations are coming from this direction you have to be a little patient with me in order to understand everything. Now radiations are coming from this direction. Now if I have to know whether this, now I have known using electrometer that these radiation carries charges. Now the third thing I'm trying to find is whether the property of these radiation is having charge, whether that is separable from the radiation or whether it is inseparable from the radiation. That means whether the charge is intrinsic property of radiation. In order to find out what I must do is, I must change the direction of this, this radiation. It is flowing from cathode to anode. If I am able to somehow bend this radiation upward or downward and then check with the electrometer whether charges are still coming. If charges are still coming on electrometer, 
after this radiation being bent upward or downward and radiation not falling on anode if charges are still measured on anode that means charges are separable from the radiation you understand so what he did he bent the radiation now i'm going to tell you after a while how he did exactly that but for now just believe me that somehow he was able to do that The radiation which was falling straight on anode was bended like this. So the radiation was not able to reach anode. Somehow it was bended in the midway. So the radiation is not falling on anode, but when you have an electrometer here, then electrometer is not detecting any radi any charge. That means when you change the path of radiation, the radiation carries the charge with itself and the charge is not falling on the anode. That means the charge is the inseparable property of the radiation. Now, why is this important to find out? You would understand in a meanwhile. Just be patient. So we know three things up till now. First, when you produce such a high voltage, then the radiation is also produced, number one. Number two, the radiation have a charge. How do we know that? Using electrometer. Number three, that charge is the inseparable property of the radiation. Radiation and charge cannot be separated from one another. These three things we know. Now, the fourth thing that we have to find out whether that radiation has negative charge or positive charge. As I explained to you, electrometer doesn't tell you the value, the, 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 the kind of charge, whether positive or negative. It just tells you whether there's a charge or not. So the fourth thing we have to do is we have to find out what is the nature of the charge that this radiation is carrying, whether that is positively charged or that is negatively charged. Now, how J.J. Thompson was able to do it was like this. Now, what he did, he produced another system, electrode, like this. Okay, now this is the positive electrode and this is the negative electrode. Now, there, there would be, of course, you understand, as you have two electrodes here and there is a power source connected with these two electrodes. Similarly, you have two electrodes here and there would be a power source connecting, connected between these two electrodes, which I have not shown for the sake of simplicity. But you understand that. This is connected to the positive terminal of the power source and this is connected towards the negative terminal of the power source. Or let's reverse this. This is connected to the negative source of terminal of the power source and this plate is connected to the positive terminal of the power source. So what happens? The radiation, which was going straight on anode, bends like this on the positive plate. Now this proves beyond any shadow of doubt that the radiation is having negative charge. You see, this is the positive terminal of the battery and the negative charge will be attracted towards the positive terminal, okay? unlike charges attract each other. If this would have been going on the negative plate, then that would have proved that the radiation is having positive charge. Now, since the radiation is being attracted to the positive plate, that means the radiation has negative charge. Prior to this, we have proved that radiation has charge and this experiment, which he did afterwards, he added, he expanded the scope of this setup and the experiment and he proved that the negative charge, the radiation, which is actually being produced that has a charge that charge the nature of the charge is negative by using these two anodes so we also know now that the radiation which is being produced by the setup is having negative charge on it so what else is to be proved the obvious natural extension of this would be to find out the amount of negative charge that is present in the radiation